If you want to have a plant in the same spot and it's not possible to go up in size even though it's time to repot, what should you do? Are you doomed? Will you have to remove your favorite plant from the favorite spot? Well, the quick answer is, of course, no. You can repot in the same size pot over and over again. And in this video, we will show you how to do that. So let's break this down so you know why you're doing things and when to do them. So this video is divided into three parts. Why should you repot? When should you repot? And how should you repot? So if you want to skip forward, you have timestamps in the description below. Now everything in this video can be used on most types of tropical indoor plants and most sizes of plants and pots as well. So one, why do we repot? Well, after a while, the roots can be massive in the pot. That means that you can start having problems. One indication that it could be time to repot is if you have roots coming out of the drainage holes in the bottom of the pot. This is usually an indication that it's time to repot. Another reason to repot could be loss of percolation. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you water your plant and you notice that the water doesn't go down into the soil immediately, it actually lingers on on top of the soil here. Then you have loss of percolation, meaning that the water is not going through. That can be an indication that you have a lot of roots inside of the pot and the water cannot get through or it takes a while to get through. If you have loss of percolation, you need to repot. Another indication can also be that you have loss of water retention. What that means is that when you water your plant here, you can see that the water just goes straight through. There is no delay in that, meaning the soil is not absorbing any of the water. It's just going straight through. And this can happen when the soil is really, really old. It has been broken down so that it cannot hold any water anymore. This is also an indication that you need to repot. Another indication can also be loss of nutritional value in the soil, meaning that the soil cannot hold nutrients anymore. Now, if your plant is starting to lose its color, all of the plant, all of the leaves at the same time, not just the top or the bottom, it's starting to look shaded. And you know that you have added some nutrients when you've watered the plant. You know that it, there should be nutrients to the plant, but it's still starting to look a little bit shaded. You could have what we call nutrient value deficiency, meaning that the soil cannot hold and release nutrients anymore. So that can also be an indication that it's time to repot. So number two, when is the perfect time to do a repot? Usually we recommend two times a year. The first time is in early spring and the other time is in early autumn. The reason for that is that those two points, the plant is in what we call an energy positive. It has been door a little bit dormant over the winter time, even though you have it indoors where the temperature is almost the same all year round, the plant actually notices that it gets less light during winter and the humidity goes down as well. That means that it will go a little bit dormant and it will store its energy. When that daylight time during the day goes up, the humidity goes up, it knows it's spring and then it wants to start to grow. That is a perfect time to go in and do that repot. Same way in, late, in early autumn. After the summer months when you've had really, really high heat, really a lot of sun, the plant has been doing one thing. It has been moving water through the plant all the time to not dehydrate. It has also stored a lot of that nutrients. So when, when autumn arrives, it will actually start to grow again. But this time it will start to grow 
particularly in the roots and not in the foliage. That is also a good time to do a repot. With that said, know that you can do a repot almost any time of a year, but try not to do it when there is some form of extreme. It could be extreme heat, extremely low humidity or extremely high humidity. When you have an extreme of some sort, don't do a repot. But you could do it almost any time of a year. But we always, always say we do a repot only when the plant is feeling well, when it's showing you that it's feeling good. Because if it's not feeling good, a repot is quite a stressful event for the plant. So if it's not feeling good and you do a repot, it could actually feel even worse. Unless, of course, you know that it needs a repot to feel good. That's the only exception. Now, just to clarify, we want you to do a repot when you have some of those indications we mentioned earlier. Loss of percolation, not, be, not being able to retain water, or having a nutrient deficiency. Then you know it's time to repot because of those reasons. But if your plant is not feeling well for other reasons, most common reason is that you have overwatered or underwatered your plant. That is not a reason to repot. Then you try and rectify that problem first. And when you see that it's actually starting to feel well again, and you have the other indications, then you do a repot. Now, if you don't have any indications at all, it can also be a good thing to do a repot on a schedule. What I mean by that is it's okay to do a repot every two or three years. So if you're not getting any of those indications, you can do a repot as well if the plant is feeling well, just to make sure that the roots have everything they need and to try and prevent problems that could come up. So number three, how should you do a repot in the same pot? Well, normally we always recommend when you repot that you always move into a slightly larger pot. So if you have your plant in this size, you should go up to this size. So it's one or two sizes up. You should never go from this to this. Because what happens then is that you have too much soil and too little roots. So the soil will be moist at a very, very long time. That could potentially harm the roots. But in this case, we're going to try and repot in the same pot. So how do you do that? Well, the first step is, of course, to remove the plant from the pot itself. Now, we have a couple of different plants here that needs a repot. I'm actually going to do it on this Dracaena circulosa here because it doesn't have that much foliage. So it's easier to show you every step. It's easier than if we had an aglonema that had leaves all over the place. So we're going to do it on this one here. But I want to show you that how it can look on different species. Now, this Hueflera here, this is a Hueflera arboricola. It also has a lot of roots. Now try and remove the pot from the root ball by gently squeezing the pot on different sides. You can also try and squeeze the bottom part of the pot as well. Now, this one wasn't attached. It could be root bound. If it's root bound, it will actually be attached to the pot. So by just squeezing gently like this, you are pushing the soil and roots inwards a little bit and it will loosen from the pot. But if we look at the roots here, you can see that this has roots almost everywhere. Now I've noticed that we have a little bit of a loss of percolation for this plant. When I water on top here, it takes a long time for the water to go through the pot. So we have an indication that it's time to repot. On this Dracaena, we have the same thing. It's quite a new plant. It's, I think it was repotted into this about two years ago. Uh, and it's time for a repot because we have lots of percolation as well. So I'll just remove it from, just gently try and take a hold of the foliage here, push the pot, and then 
try and pull it out. Now, I don't have any roots in the bottom here. There could be roots coming out, but that wasn't the indication that this needed a repot. But when I push this out, you can see that the root ball is completely intact because you have roots almost everywhere. You can see that the roots have started to grow. It's been growing down, then it found its way up, and then it's going down again and up again. And roots work like this. They try and seek out downwards and outwards. And when they have nowhere left to go, they will also start to go inwards. And it's usually then you get loss of percolation or other problems. But as you can see, for this plant here, this is quite a big pot. So we don't have to go up in size. So we're just going to try and repot this into this. Now, what you use to do this is a couple of tools here. If it's a small one like this, you can usually get away by using a sharp scissor or a sharp shearer. Now make sure that all of the tools you use are cleaned thoroughly so that you're not transferring any bacteria or fungus to the roots. If you have a bigger plant or if you're perhaps repotting, let's say, a palm that can have massive root systems, this is not enough. So you could use a garden saw like this. Make sure that it's clean as well uh, to prune the roots with. But if you don't have a garden saw, you can actually use a kitchen knife like this. This is a bread knife, which have these serrated edge as well. This can also be used to saw through very, very thick roots. But for this plant, I think I will just go with scissors and a shearer because I think that's enough. So we have a rule when we are repotting. We never take away more than one third of the root ball. You could go up to 50%, half of the root ball. But if you do that, you're on the edge of getting problems. You could get problems. Now, what usually happens is that some parts of the plant or some stems could actually die if you prune too much. Because you could be pr pruning away the roots that are attached to just that stem or just the, that trunk. So, never more than one third, but you could, if you have to, go up to half the root ball. Now start off by laying the plant on the side like this. And this is usually not a problem if you have any of the indications we spoke of earlier, because you will have a massive root system. If you don't have a massive root system, when you put it on the side like this, the soil will start to fall off. But that's also a good thing because you want to add some new soil to the roots after you've pruned them. So the first thing I will do is that I will actually take away almost one fourth of the root ball at the bottom here. So I will be taking away as much as almost like this. It's almost one fourth. You can see it's almost an inch there. I will take away an inch on this plant here like that. And you can saw it off, you can cut it off by a scissor or a shearer. I'll actually use the kitchen knife for this. So you can see that it will work with just using the tools you have at home. So you just saw off the complete bottom fourth of the root ball. Just use a sawing method like this and don't do it too quickly. Just move gently downwards. This will mean that you will cut off the roots clearly and not pull them off. Like that. Now this means that you will have a clean cut on the roots here. So we'll see here we have a root ball that is a lot of roots that we've taken away. We pruned them off. 
Now, after we've done that, we're going to take away some of the soil and some of the roots that are on the outside here. As I said before, the roots have been seeking first downwards, then outwards. So you have a lot of roots here. Now, there are a couple of things you can do here. You could just use your fingers. I think I'll be able to do that almost everywhere on this plant and just try and remove the soil gently like this. Just tease away the soil. But in some cases, you have so much roots that this will not suffice. You, you have to do something else. Now, a very simple way to remove that soil on the outside is to just use a fork like this. I've taken a standard fork that I've, I had been using this for barbecue, but I stole it from home and I've made some adjustments. As you can see here, I've taken the uh, edges of the fork here and actually just bent them a little bit. So you get a rake, a makeshift rake. It almost looks like a rake from the garden. This means that if, if I had them in the normal way, if they were straight like this, you could be pulling off too much soil or too much roots. By just pulling them a little bit aside like this, you're actually easier to just tease the roots and not harm them. So I can do that in the parts where I have a lot of roots and not that much soil. Just use the rake and try and tease away the soil like this. And I'll go all the way around, just trying to tease away a little bit. You don't want too much because, I, because as I said, you want to remove around one third of the complete root ball. There you go. Now, I will not be removing more than this. Now, I have removed almost one third of the complete. I removed one fourth of the bottom part here, and then I removed some of the soil around. So, approximately one third of the complete root ball. Now, the last thing I will do here is that if you still have a lot of roots down in the bottom here, what you should do is that you should start to tease those roots a little bit. Just remove a little bit of soil and tease the, the roots so that they are going downwards like this. They are almost doing that already on this one, but make sure that they are. Because if they were flat like this or if they were still very compacted, when you plant it, it will take a long time for the roots to correct themselves and to start moving in the direction you want. You want them to start moving out to the new soil. But by teasing them like this and having them downwards or outwards, they can start to move directly into the new soil. So now it's time to repot this into the same pot. If you can, always use a pot that has drainage holes in the bottom. This will help you to not make the mistake of giving too much water to your plants. So this will later on go in an outer pot so it looks a little bit better. Now, for this plant, I will be using a standard planting soil that I've mixed up with perlite. In this case, I've mixed up somewhere in between 70 to 80 percent of standard planting soil and 20 to 30 percent of perlite and i have that here now we add the perlite to be able to give a little bit better drainage in the soil because standard planting soil often absorb too much water and it could potentially harm the roots of your plant this is the this is a dracaena, which means that if it's too moist for a very long period of time, the roots will damage. So we need a good drainage for our soil. Start by 
measuring a little bit to see that you, you want to have the approximate same level you had earlier when you repot. So I'll just add a couple of centimeters in the bottom. Then you can just see that it will go down to the right level. Well, no, too much. Let's take out. Then what you do is that you place the root ball, make sure that all of the roots are coming down into the pot like this. Always do a little push like this just a gentle push down into the soil to make sure that the roots in the bottom have contact with the new soil. Because if you just place it down there, there can be air bubbles and other things that makes it harder for the roots to touch the soil. So just push a little bit gently, do a little wiggle of the plant like this. Then you add soil around the roots or around the root ball. Now, as you can see, I also push a little bit on the soil around here to make sure that there are no air pockets. <coughs> 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 to make sure that there are no air pockets down by the soil. Now, if you want to, now this is not something you have to do, but it's a good thing. I recommend it. Now, this is just a wooden stick that I've sharpened a little bit. You can take a wooden stick like this and just push it down into the soil all around like this. Now what happens is you'll see that, that the soil actually starts to go down. You get the soil to go further down into the pot. It actually compacts a little bit more. You get all of that air out of the roots. So when you've done that, you can just add more soil and do a little push again. If you get air pockets in between the roots and the soil, it could potentially harm the roots. They can dry up and not work as perfectly as you want. So just add a little bit new soil again. Slight push like this, and there you go. Now I've repotted this plant into the same size pot. Now for the aftercare, make sure that you water this plant immediately. And make sure that all of the soil in the pot and all of the roots get to be moist. This is really, really important because if they dry out too much, or if the soil dry up too much, you could potentially harm the roots. And you make sure that it is moist for at least one month. After that, you can start to take care of it as you usually did. And for that first month, make sure that the plant is getting a lot of indirect sunlight. No matter where you had it before, make sure that it gets a lot of indi the indirect sunlight for at least a month. Then you can move it to where you had it before and start watering it in the same way as you did before. Now, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now, until next time, hi door.